believe that partnership with Microsoft is definitely the future. I truly believe Azure is the right solution. Trust in the cloud, security. Azure is very core to what we do. In my opinion, the premier cloud. Azure makes life easy. And that's one of the reasons we partner so well with Microsoft in that space. I am a co-founder and CMO. Chief Revenue Officer. Chief Strategy Officer. VP of Marketing and Sales. If you think about security, it's all going to come from Azure Active Directory. Having Azure as the primary cloud stack allows you to expand using Office, Teams, Dynamic. So you have is a complete suite of solutions that you can provide to a customer. We wanted a platform that enabled us to scale with our customers, specifically with their data. And where are they going to put it? They're going to put it in a place that they know and they trust. That's Microsoft. That's Azure. We allow partners to build on their own terms in the cloud or on-premise or um, hybrid environments. To really begin to build and expand their business and make money a lot faster because of the engine we've built. Azure will play a key part in our continued development and growth globally. And we're able to emphasize that value and build upon it for our customers and they're very thankful for that. Good morning. My name is Stages Dixit. Um, I work in the Azure Business Group, responsible for driving adoption of Azure with our partners and with our customers. First of all, I'm extremely glad to be here. Prague is one of my favorite cities for many reasons, and there are remarkable things about it, but one of the things that always surprises me in a pleasant way is you can actually look at any statue or anything and account for 10 fingers and 10 toes and, and all the characteristics of that. And so it's amazing how untouched and how pristine the, the city has actually survived post the, post the war. So really glad to be here, um, love this opportunity and we're gonna talk about Azure. The video that you saw before this is great because it's a video where customers and partners tell the story on our behalf. We try to do that every few weeks. We put customers and partners in front of the camera and have them tell the story. And it really validates some of the momentum that we're driving on the Azure business. Um, building up on what Jeff and team presented, uh, I feel that Azure has high level of relevance to a conference like this. Because we believe that, or we like to think about Azure as the kind of world computer that helps you build these building blocks. And especially with the technologies that we have, the clouds that we have, whether it's Dynamics 365 or Microsoft 365, it can actually enable some very interesting scenarios that no other provider on the planet can actually help build those. Whether it's intelligent collaboration, whether it's field-connected service with Dynamics, Azure can power all that stuff. And so I feel that the relevance of this Azure as a topic for this conference is even more so than probably it was last year or a year before that. So really glad to be here. What I'm planning to do is, um, I'll talk about Azure and what we've been doing for the Azure business. In that context, I would also talk about some of the new announcements that we did in November, especially at Ignite. So let me start off. It's, it's been an amazing year for us. And just to, just to kind of highlight a few things, um, I'm gonna start off with some partnerships. The partnerships that we formed with Oracle with VMware, we expanded our partnership with SAP. And really, the in intention of that is to obviously grow Azure business, but more importantly, we are trying to get to where, we where, where you as customers and partners want us to be, to impact your business. Secondly, we have tons and tons of new capabilities that we launched over the last year. Literally, I don't remember a single week where we haven't launched something new. So it's been really, really powerful that way. And last but not the least, we acquired GitHub last year. 
And this is a partnership, an internal partnership within Microsoft. It's run as a separate unit, and it plays a big role in the open source community that we love. And so we are committed to making further investments and making sure that we stay true to the intent of what GitHub um, is. Now, a lot of companies are making, are driving a bunch of different digital uh, transformations. And digital transformation is interesting because every company drives digital transformation in a different way. And if you kind of distill it down, the biggest thing is that the entry point of a digital transformation journey and an exit point of the same journey is very different for different companies. And so our intention is to make sure that regardless of where the entry point is and what the exit point is, we want to make sure that we support those journeys. And some of these numbers are staggering. Companies who are driving digital transformation are seeing tangible benefits. But few numbers out here on the screen, 85% of the companies say that if they do not offer or they do not go through this digital transformation, they will be irrelevant. 64% actually saying that they will, in fact, go out of business if they don't do anything in the next four years. So staggering, staggering numbers. So I'm going to talk about some digital transformation stories. This one is a company that's hiring probably more developers than Facebook and Google. It is number three in Bay Area in terms of seeking tech talent. And the interesting thing is, it's not Uber, or it's not Salesforce, it's Walmart. And I love this story because it talks about a large company like Walmart embracing digital transformation to make sure that they meet, meet the needs of their employees as well as their customers. The next story is about a small restaurant, that, restaurant in Japan that has been passed down three generations. A server within this restaurant taught herself machine learning and have deployed these machine learning algorithms to build custom offerings, so to speak to deliver that value to their customers. Now, this is an amazing story because this actually validates the fact that anybody can leverage the power of Azure to create value. The third example, meet Chelsea. Chelsea is a single mom, minimum wage, and really high school diploma. Doesn't have a tech background. She works on the, the sleeper cap fitting unit in Packard. And she is enabled to deliver and to work on these through HoloLens that offers prescriptive guidance and steps that she has to follow in order to kind of do a job. And again, this example is amazing because this example actually helps us answer the question, what makes Azure unique? And what makes Azure unique is that we can actually empower people, companies, and folks like Chelsea to achieve more. Invent with purpose. And that's how we think about Azure. We think about Azure as a way to create value for customers and for partners and more importantly, to help them invent with purpose. And we do it in certain ways. We call them promises to you as customers and partners. And this promise to you is we will deliver these promises in order to create value for you and your businesses. And more importantly, we will empower you as customers and partners to invent with purpose. So these are the four promises. 
The first one is be future ready. We have built lots and lots of capabilities in the last year. But these capabilities, we need to build capabilities, including new ones, to meet your needs today. And we need to continuously invest in building capabilities for tomorrow. Things like AI and IoT and quantum computing, which we are kind of almost like the tip of the iceberg in terms of what it can do and what those technologies will empower. Build on your terms is all about developers. We want developers to feel that they are using the platform, the tools, the technology of their choice. Whether it's open source, whether it's not, whether it's tools that they've, they've been using for years and they want to continue using them, we want to empower them to actually build on their terms. Third one is operate hybrid seamlessly. Technology is sitting on premises. It's sitting in their data centers. Technology is sitting on the edge. Technology is sitting in the cloud. And across those aspects, all these paradigms need to work seamlessly. And so hybrid is something that we believe in, we've always believed in, and we will continue to invest in it. And last one is about trust. And I feel that trust is probably the most important thing. From a security perspective, we have, we do about $1 billion of investment every year. We have 3,500 cybersecurity engineers who are constantly monitoring for threats. We have, it's about how we do business. We are not gonna be, and, and this question gets asked to us all the time, right? Are you gonna be in my business as a customer? And our answer to that, a short answer is no. Because we truly believe that our intention and reason for existence is to have a platform that enables you to invest, enable you to invent, enable you to innovate. And we will continue to, continue to stay true to that fact. And the momentum that we're seeing is amazing. More than 95% of the customers in uh, Fortune 500 companies use Azure across different industries, across different scenarios, both horizontal and vertical. And we're really glad to see this momentum. So let's, let's get into each of these promises because there are investments and products and announcements that we recently, especially in November, that we did that align to each of these promises. As I said before, we, we have 1,000 plus capabilities that we launched last one, last, in the last one year. And these capabilities are across infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, data, analytics, AI, IoT, in every other aspect of that business. Let's talk about IS. So from an IS perspective, we offer a purpose-built infrastructure with the intention that it would meet all possible requirements and needs our customers would have. So if you think about scale, we have 54 regions, 150 virtual machine options that customers, depending on what they're trying to do, whether it's on the edge, whether it's in the cloud, whether it's on premises, they would have the right option, the right size that would fit their requirement. We, Windows, Microsoft makes Windows Server. And we feel that it is the best place to run a Windows platform. And we continue to invest in that infrastructure. But we don't stop there. More than 50% of the workload are on Linux. And 
we are continuing to invest in each of them. We have built some interesting partnerships with large Linux providers. In fact, this is not something that the industry has seen before. With Red Hat, we have engineers in Redmond that provide support on Red Hat. And it's working really, really well. And then finally, as I spoke about these partnerships, these partnerships are important and will continue to build more and new ones because the idea is that we should be able to provide you an infrastructure and set of partnerships that will allow you to migrate any workload on Azure effortlessly. Now, moving on to PaaS, um, while most of the, a lot of customers actually think about lifting and shifting their applications, um, PaaS allows you to focus on code uh, versus the infrastructure. And that translates to more resiliency, that translates to more being your, making your app more global. And so what we have done is we probably have the broadest set of serverless compute services in the PaaS area. We have app service that host websites in addition to the mobile applications. We have Azure Functions that focuses on developers. And it's important because then developers can focus on the code, can focus on business logic versus plumbing. And then finally, we have Azure Kubernetes Service, which is a fully managed container orchest orchestration capability where we maintain it, we manage it, so that you don't have to worry about downtime. In November, we announced some enhancements in our Azure Kubernetes service. Um, we have Dev Spaces in preview, which basically allows you to take an individual service, work on an individual service on your desktop, on your local machine, but in the context of the app that's running in the cluster, without really impacting the processes that are running there. Um, we have Azure Security Center integration for AKS where you can actually manage or you can translate the security features that we have in Azure, whether it's threat detection and other things for the AKS workloads or the clusters. And then we also have general availability around a couple of interesting areas. Availability zones are basically more availability so that, especially against hardware failures. So we have strengthened the availability of resources. We've also added auto-scaling, where you can, you can increase or drive more VM capacity when required. And this is important because you can scale up or scale down depending on what resources your app needs. And the Kubernetes service, the Azure Kubernetes service is probably our, our best or most growing PaaS service. We've got tons of customers um, who are using it and we are focusing a lot on enabling a lot of customers um, and partners to use it. Next is data. Now data, we have, the, we have a broad set of data services across relational, non-relational, data warehouse, big data analytics, and we offer all that stuff as a, as a part of our data services. And so in November in, at Ignite, we announced the general availability of SQL Server 2019. And this is big because SQL Server is no longer a database. It is a data platform that allows customers to run data services in any infrastructure. You can, you can drive data services for, you can address any database workload from BI to AI, from OLTP to data warehousing. Now you can also, for the first time, run analytics 
a cross-relational, non-relational database using Spark. You can even invoke a data lake from within SQL Server. So this combination of analytics and AI and visualization makes it very easy to query any database. You know, Oracle, MongoDB, using a simple T-SQL command. And these enhancements have made it really possible for customers to leverage the strength of SQL Server. It runs everywhere. Um, you, you can actually have SQL Server and the capabilities that it offers run across your infrastructure on premises, on, in the cloud, or even at the edge. GigaOM is, um, is one of the firms that have done a lot of benchmarking studies, and they do it regularly. And these numbers are actually staggering. Both SQL DB, which is a fully managed database as a service, or if you have SQL Server on Azure, which is a fully managed infrastructure as a service, in both cases, from a performance perspective, for example, SQL, uh, SQL Server on Azure VM runs about 3.4 times faster than any, com any competitor. But in both cases, look at the savings. There is about 86 to 87% savings because by using SQL Server, you can actually leverage your existing investment that you've already made in SQL Server on-premises. And so there is a tremendous amount of savings with performance enhancements um, that this data shows. Now, as data grows, your cloud needs to accommodate it. And so what we are doing is we are taking each and every one of our database capabilities or data services and we are adding hyperscale functionality to it. And, and this hyperscale functionality actually drives tremendous amount of scale. It can drive, you know, it, it can scale up from gigabytes of data to hundreds of terabytes of data. You might be running, you know, hundreds of transactions per second. It can scale almost instantaneously to a million transactions per second. And so that hyperscale capability actually helps you optimize your app to work in the steady state, but account for the hyperscaling whenever it's required if you want to burst capacity. So at Ignite, we announced the general availability of Azure Database for PostgreSQL hyperscale. And this basically enables blazingly high performance, or blazingly fast performance, on all Postgres workloads. And this, is, and this also, customers are actually, a lot of customers are already trying this, and they're feeling the, the benefit of driving that scale and driving that performance speeds into their application, because then they can actually start driving more value to their customers um, through their application optimization. Next is analytics. So analytics, Azure Analytics, in a traditional way, is really all about how do you ingest data from all different sources into Azure Data Factory? How do you store it securely in a data lake? How do you run analytics on it using Databricks? And then the heart of analytics is our data warehousing, or Azure SQL Data Warehouse, where you prep that data up to be visualized using Power BI. And the cool thing about this uh, Azure Analytics solution is that it's simply unmatched in terms of speed. It's 14 times faster than competition and 94% cheaper than competition. So it's, really a, it's literally a no-brainer to adopt it. But then what if? we ponder over these things over the past couple of years, right? What if, if we simplify analytics further by 
getting to the insights faster? How do you enable better analytics results using your existing skills that exist within the organization? And then, how do you apply AI to all the places where data lives so that you can actually deliver and drive insights from that data? And so we announced at Ignite uh, Azure Synapse Analytics. The best way to describe this is it is a limitless analytics service with unmatched speed or time to insights. And as a part of the Synapse product, we also announced the, the, the general availability of provisioned data warehouse, which is the erstwhile SQL data warehouse, and on-demand query as a service. Now, what makes this unique? is it helps you drive limitless scale across your data workloads. It, it, you know, whether, whether it's data warehouse or whether it's big data analytics, it helps you drive tremendous amount of scale to actually enable a, petadi a petabyte devil level kind of uh, analytics. Uh, second is powerful, powerful insights. It helps. Uh, we have, what we have done is we've taken BI and machine learning and we've integrated that into Synapse. And what that allows you to do is apply AI or machine learning and BI to all your endpoints, to all your intelligent applications. And by doing that, think about projects around AI, think about projects around BI. Time for those projects to see the light of the day increases. Unified experience. And this is actually fundamentally what the value of Synapse kind of brings to the table. It gives you a unified experience across data prep, across data management, across data warehouse, across AI. And what that kind of translates to is, if you think about data engineers, they can run a query, or they can actually create, a, they can create these instances using code-free visualizations. Data scientists can build proof of concepts within minutes. Subject matter experts like business analysts can actually create BI reports and insights within minutes. So it's very powerful. And the last but not the least, we've taken the, the broadest set of Azure security services and we've weaved that into the fabric of Azure Synapse. So it gives, again, tremendous amount of security. It builds tremendous amount of trust. So if you think about it in context with what I showed before and how Synapse works, all that data that gets ingested, again, will go into the data, data lake. You can run using SQL or Spark. You can run analytics. And then if you can spend majority of the time in Synapse Studio where you can work on that data. You can create, you can prep it, and then you can actually drive a bunch of experimentations. And we feel that this one area of from using Studio, customers are already building, uh, driving a lot of experimentation, but this gives you an ability as an organization, as a customer, as a partner, to get true value from all the data that's sitting in any part of the infrastructure. Because you can glean insights that were generally not available, or at least they're not available at that speed before. The last one is around AI and IoT. AI has been amazing. We are experiencing explosive adoption of Azure AI. We have 20,000 paying customers who are, and out of the more than 85% of the Fortune 100 companies have done some projects using Azure AI in the last one year. Some of these numbers, 5 billion cognitive services transactions per month, are staggering. There are about a million 
machine learning experiments per month that we keep seeing as a part of customers leveraging AI services. So let's look at a, let's hear from the customers around how they're using it. Uber is a great example of how they're using cognitive services specifically to make their application, the mobile app, more secure. Uh, and let's hear what they have to say. We come to work every day to pilot, test, and launch new technology solutions. Real-time ID check is the latest technology example where we at Uber are constantly developing and testing new solutions to predict, prevent, and reduce security risks in ways that weren't possible before. It's through this partnership with Microsoft that we've been able to develop this technology quickly and ensure that every rider and every driver has an excellent experience. Real-time ID check is a prompt that appears in the driver's app, asking them to take a self photo. We can do a check in real time to make sure that that identity of the person who took the picture matches the account holder who's been approved to drive. Doing that serves a couple of purposes. Drivers know that their identities and their accounts are being protected, and riders know that the driver who they're with has been screened. Jen? Evan? Hi, uh, yeah. Hi. Real-time ID is a smart technology. What that means is it factors in and addresses the edge cases. The situation where the driver is wearing glasses or a hat and they weren't in the identification that we have on file. The beautiful thing is they can recognize these changes and ask the driver to remove their sunglasses or retake the photo. The partnership with Microsoft Cognitive Services allowed us to go from idea to execution to implementation across the country in a matter of months. Already, we've been able to make thousands of rides safer, and very soon we're going to be making millions of rides safer through this technology. And there are, there are several hundreds of customers who are actually using Cognitive Services to enable this kind of functionality that Uber has. Uh, one of the interesting things about Uber is they actually build this within three months. So again, time to market with these pre-built existing cognitive services, pre-built algorithm um, accelerates that time to market in a big way. Next is IoT. Um, from an IoT perspective, we feel that Azure is the undisputed leader to provide IoT, especially in context with cloud. We have thousands of IoT customers um, who have actually used Azure IoT already and are using it in the process of using it. Um, for example, I mean, Rolls Royce here um, helps their airlines to make, to drive efficiency, fuel efficiency, using cognitive models or using um, um, IoT capabilities. Um, Starbucks is a great example. Starbucks actually using predictive maintenance can deliver suggestions to their partners where they can actually deliver an experience to their customers when they buy a um, cup of coffee. So it's, a lot of companies are using IoT in a big way and, and creating value for their customers. The way we build the portfolio around Azure IoT is think about that portfolio to be layered. And, and the, the cool thing about this layered fashion um, portfolio is that you have a choice to get in and get out wherever and whatever fits your need. For example, you can start at the very bottom at an infrastructure layer. But then you can actually start driving some new capabilities through the PaaS layer. Yeah, things like IoT Hub or even Time Series Insights. And those are, those are capabilities that are offered as a part of that PaaS kind of layer. Or there are fully managed services, like the one that I mentioned before, which is the, the field-connected service with Dynamics. And that service, you can actually take, make use of these already available SaaS capabilities to augment what you're trying to deliver into your, into your product. And then the cool thing is that depending on what you're trying to do and depending on what resources you're trying to bring to bear, you can, you can come in and out of it. And what I mean by that is you can be actually using a fully managed service 
but you realize that you need to actually drive more globalness to your application, or you need to drive more compute power, and you can come down a layer and add those VMs without really impacting the processes that are already working and they're already running. So it's very powerful, especially with, with this kind of layered approach that we have. The second promise, so we covered the first one, which was uh, around being future ready, building for today and building for tomorrow. And all those capabilities that I showed are the ones that we continue to invest in. The second one is build on your terms. And this is, this is really about developer velocity. We want developers to have the choice and the option to use whatever platform they want. Um, developers can, there are about more than 15 million developers who are actually using Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. Um, we want developers to have an option to use open source. Um, we are fully committed in making the contributions to the open source community, as well as investing in building new open source capabilities ourselves. Um, we have built uh, .NET Core, we have TypeScript, we have Visual Studio Code, and we have contributed immensely and we continue to contribute on open source projects like PostgreSQL, Linux kernels, and many others. So our commitment to open source is very strong and we, can, we will continue to actually show that momentum. Now if you think about Microsoft, we have the most complete portfolio of dev tools for developers. We have Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. You pick any survey, they will figure, out, figure as well, the top two um, code editors. We have GitHub, which is obviously the heart of open source community. There are 40 million developers in the, in the GitHub community. The Azure as a platform itself, we offer about 150 services under the hood for developers to actually build capabilities within their application. Many of them pre-built, many of them custom, depending on what they're trying to do. And then there is Power Apps, which in combination with Azure, it actually provides developers to focus on the high value stuff. But the coolest thing is that it also helps get the subject matter experts who understand the domain to actually build the workflow, to build processes. And there is no better, frankly, there's no better um, set of resources or people to actually build those processes than the domain expert. And the unison of Azure and Power Apps with no code or low code environments has the ability to do that. So let's, let's talk about Visual Studio. Visual Studio, our goal with Visual Studio is to offer a most comprehensive set of tools to the developer community. Visual Studio and Visual Studio for Mac, for example, are the options that developers have if they are looking for an integrated de development environment, IDE. If they want something which is lightweight, we have Visual Studio Code. And Visual Studio Code is actually very interesting because it gives them the flexibility to have a platform that runs everywhere and it's free. So again, as I said, it is one of our promise to the open source community through things like Visual Studio Code. We also have, as I think I mentioned as before, it's the world's fastest growing programming language is TypeScript. Again, something that we're investing heavily in. At Ignite, we announced the public preview of Visual Studio Online. And Visual Studio Online is important from a development perspective because it gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility as a developer to, be, to do persistent coding. 
seamless coding across the paradigms in, in where they exist. You can actually have the same experience with a full-fledged IDE. You can have the same experience with if you're working on a local machine, or if you have the same experience if you're actually using a browser-based uh, development environment. But it helps you create. It helps you create cloud-based development environments on the fly. And these cloud-based projects could be a simple test project or could be a large, multi-dimensional application. For any of those scenarios, Visual Studio Online would easily integrate with your existing infrastructure and existing preference. GitHub. So last year, we acquired GitHub. GitHub, as I said before, 40 million developers. It is the largest community of developers. And we are fully committed and vested in continuing to keep it that way. Um, collaboration is, the, is at the heart of GitHub. Um, last year, developers made about a billion contributions through projects and repos. Again, staggering numbers, something that we will continue to invest in. The cool thing is, though, that GitHub also has the enterprise version. In fact, 31 out of the Fortune 50 companies are already using GitHub Enterprise to build capabilities and applications. So again, it is something which has become very visceral. It's become more mainframe than it has ever been. And again, we, we want to actually keep on growing that. So let's uh, watch a video of Shell, a large organization, and how they're using DevOps and, and GitHub to build capabilities. In the energy industry, we have a vast amount of data. Now machine learning and digital technologies make it possible to unlock those insights and transform our business. DevOps as a methodology allows us to bring teams together and to move quickly and generate tremendous value, particularly through the energy transition as we move from molecules to electrons. We've been on an exponential growth curve. We have a data science network of around 2,000 people. At that sort of scale, we need to standardize the way we work. And that's why DevOps is so important. So as we've been trying to standardize AI across the enterprise and the way in which we develop new solutions, we've been working with Microsoft to leverage products like Azure Boards, Azure Pipelines, GitHub Enterprise, in order to ensure that our engineers and our data scientists are working consistently, that they can share code and they can deploy them to the edge and the cloud easily. That's changed our development cycles from months to weeks. Having GitHub Enterprise integrated with Azure makes it really simple for any collaborator on the project to follow the life cycle of the code, knowing where it's at, where it has been deployed, and how successfully. So last but not the least in that, in context with build on your terms, is what I already spoke about, which is the combination of Azure and Power Apps. And rather than me saying that again, I'm gonna show you another video where it talks about um, how Virgin Atlantic is using that combination to create value for their customers. So let's run the video. My name is Manuela Pilcha. I develop Power Apps. I help other people develop Power Apps and I help IT manage what's being created. A lot of our workforce isn't based in the office. They are home. The one that made kind of the most impact is an app to complete safety and compliance checklists. You just go through a couple of questions, make sure that people are wearing the safety footwear, the high-vis jackets, equipment is stored in the correct places. It allows the team to see trends, see improvements. So let's move on to the third one, which is the third promise is operate hybrid seamlessly. Um, so this is, we believe in hybrid, as I said. This is important because data is, or uh, technology is sitting um, in, in all paradigms. It's sitting in your data centers. It's sitting in, uh, um, on the cloud. It's sitting at the edge. And so having a seamless 
connective tissue that work across these paradigms is very important. And that's why hybrid, in general, um, is our strong belief that it is one of the fundamental things that we have to come and help customers with, because moving to the cloud or digital transformation projects or journey to the cloud is not overnight, it's not binary. It is a process and it's a journey, and that's why I call it a journey. So one of the questions that we always get asked is why hybrid? And, and in addition to the reasons that you just mentioned, which is you know, it, it needs to we need to have a consistent environment and across those three paradigms, it's important that when customers are building their capabilities, for example, if you have your technology in your data center, in many, in many ways, you want that to work seamlessly. You want, you want to continue to have that technology in your data center. You have a bunch of devices on the edge that are intelligent devices. You want those devices to be running there. You, you, in addition to everything else, you want to build a modern application using cloud. And so for it to actually work simultaneously and efficiently, hybrid or having the right capabilities within hybrid is important. And so what we have done to, at Microsoft is we have basically brought together a bunch of hybrid capabilities or a bunch of technologies that enable that seamless connection across those paradigms. And there are, se there are specific services that are super critical for hybrid scenarios to work. Things like identity and security, a common management, um, DevOps, application and data services. It's important to bring these capabilities in context with these hybrid solutions. So what I'm going to talk about is I'm going to talk about IO, Azure IoT and Azure Stack first, and then we're going to talk about Azure Arc, which, is, uh, which, which has some major announcements that we made during Ignite. So Azure IoT, as I mentioned before, it's really about devices. There are devices that are sitting at the edge. It could be a small microcontroller, which is it's the size of a a fingernail, or it could be a massive system that's sitting and that's doing things like robotics and um, big sensors that are sensing a whole bunch of different signs and, and, and signals. And for that to work, you need to have an ecosystem of partners, ecosystem of devices that work with Azure. So we spend the last few years in building these relationships, we have about 10,000 partners and about 2,500 IoT, Azure IoT solutions in the market. And, and where this helps is, if you are a manufacturer, if you're looking for a manufacturing solution, then we can better suggest the right combination of devices and capabilities for you to kind of enable that. Same thing if you, if you are a retail company or if you have a retail solution that you're building, we can bring to light and bring to suggest the right level and the right capabilities and the right devices for that capability to be enabled. Azure Stack. Azure Stack really kind of brings compute and storage and intelligence to the edge. Think about an a oil rig in the middle of the ocean. It needs to work in a disconnected fashion. It needs to process information in a disconnected fashion and still kind of work with, within the context of the solution. And so we've introduced two things to make that happen. One is a commercial series, a device which is an Azure um, stack edge device that is a rackable it can go into a rack you know, behind a retail store. Extremely durable. Um, that can bring the cloud capabilities on-prem. But for the example that I gave before, which is like an oil rig in the middle of the ocean, we've also come up with a very rugged series that, is, that has a battery backup. You can take it along on the, on the move. 
It's extremely durable. You know, it can be bounced around. It'll still be, in fact, be demoed during Ignite, um, and it works. And so again, depending on what you're trying to do, depending on what type of capability you're trying to bring, um, we have the right, right device for, that, for each of those scenarios. So let's talk about Azure Arc. And before, before I talk about Azure Arc as a capability, this is a scenario that we've spoke about before, right? which is your technology is sitting, a lot of companies, a lot of you guys are actually using multiple clouds. Um, you have data centers on premises, and you have a bunch of edge, edge devices. And for this to kind of work seamlessly, you need to have a single pane, single glass, that allows you to manage all these, regardless of where they sit. And this is where Azure Arc becomes extremely valuable. So we, we, we launched a preview during Ignite. Um, the first two databases, or rather data services, that have been enabled through Arc is around the Azure SQL database and Azure database for PostgreSQL. These are, the, these are just the starting points of data services that we will enable. Um, the idea is that we will enable all of them. But if you think about what, what value does Azure Arc bring to the table, one is that it, it can run Azure data services anywhere. Um, the first two that we have enabled is SQL database and Postgres, but it, w it helps you enable and, and run data services in any infrastructure. Second, it extends Azure management and governance to any infrastructure to provide a consistent view across Kubernetes clusters, Windows and Linux, servers, and Azure data services. So it gives you this kind of one view to look at it. And most interestingly, that these services and these workloads could be actually sitting in an AWS or a GCP cloud. You will still be able to actually um, drive that management and governance to it. It helps you adopt the cloud practices, the best, cloud, the best practices within cloud. Like, for example, DevOps. You can actually bring DevOps to to premises. And then finally, it helps you translate and integrate the Azure security, the trusted security services that we have as a part of that fabric. So if you think about now that in, in Azure Arc in context with data services, it basically kind of validates the stuff that I mentioned on the previous slide, right? By connecting you can, you can have a unified um, management console that actually gives you a single view for all your database workloads, regardless of where they're sitting, on-prem, on cloud, um, or in some other, um, uh, other cloud. It brings you a tremendous amount of elasticity. Uh, as I mentioned before, if you think about an application that's running that's optimized for what it does, Azure Arc can help drive that scale, that elasticity by, by increasing or decreasing, depending on the need, the virtual machines that are required. Because it uses Azure services, which are evergreen, you don't have to worry about keeping them current. You can enable, you can leverage the cloud billing model where you actually pay only for what you use, and then the security aspect that I mentioned about. So last but not the least is the trust in your cloud. And I've, I've spoken about this before as well, but there are three things that are important to remember when we think about this promise. First one is about the global scale that Azure operates at, right? We have 54 Azure regions. These are the, the largest number of regions as, you know, as compared to any other cloud provider. We have 91, and actually it's 92 compliance offerings. We have invested in compliance offering ahead of the curve because we feel it's important, especially in regulated industry, for customers to make sure that they, have, they are using capabilities that have these compliance ratings. And then finally, 
the security aspect, which I mentioned, there is tons of investment that we continue to make, both in terms of the engineers that are looking at these threats, as well as the core investment that we're making in the technology from, from a security perspective, that makes it, that makes our platform trustworthy, that makes our platform provide peace of mind to customers, and that we want to make sure that the, the key aspect and the key reason why we're there is to enable our customers and partners to invent and to innovate versus we being in your space and your category. Finally, to make this easy, um, we, are, we have invested in very specific set of programs, I would say. Uh, some of you might have heard of Cloud Adoption Framework, which is really um, a set of best practices to really help you drive a business case for why cloud. Um, it brings together best practices that you can employ and that you can deploy within your organization. A um, lot of partners uh, are actually using this um, for driving tip of the spear capabilities like assessments and stuff. So it beco they become better aligned with, um, with Microsoft in terms of how we are talking to the customers. And then we have a program called Azure Migration Program, which obviously CAF, which is Cloud Adoption Framework, is obviously a part of. But what this allows you to do is, if, if you, this helps customers migrate their applications. We have funding available. We have partners who are specially trained to help you migrate. Um, you might have heard of a term called Azure Expert MSPs. And we have a bunch of resources that we provide as a part of that program that customers and partners can leverage um, as they kind of go through this migration journey or the digital transformation journey. Finally, I just want to end with the, all the kind of bag of goods that we announced at Ignite. Um, I, I spoke about each and every one of them, Azure Arc, is a public preview. Azure Synapse Analytics is generally available. Uh, SQL Server, general availability um, during Ignite. Visual Studio Online is in preview. Azure Database for uh, PostgreSQL Hyperscale is generally available. And Azure Kubernetes Service is generally available. Thank you.